Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my humble home here in Livingston, Montana. My casa, my hacienda, whatever you want to call this affair up here. Anyway, today's date is July 4th of 2023, and I certainly hope you're having a, a happy 4th of July. Personally, myself, I'm not into fireworks too much. I think after fireworks displays and everything, everything goes up in smoke, and somebody has spent one heck of a lot of money for you know, a little bit of entertainment there, a half an hour, 45 minutes worth of entertainment. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. It's storytelling time. I'm going to tell you a story from when I was about 12 years old, and I had a co-conspirator in this particular scene there, and that was my brother Nick, and he was 10 years old. Now, this is approximate, the, the, it was the early 1960s, if I believe, you know. But anyway, this, this took place in a place called Ronan, Montana. R-O-N-A-N. Just Google it. You'll find Ronan, Montana up in the northwestern corner below Flathead Lake on US-93. Okay, back in those days, running through the middle of Ronan was this place called Spring Creek. And that was a pretty notable little creek back in the day. I don't know what they're doing up there now, but back in the day, what, what the old timers up there in, in uh, Ronan would do is they'd stalk that creek. And there, there, was, there ended up to be some pretty big trout in there because... After the fishing derbies were all over with and everything, that's why they stocked the, the creek there. But a, after all this stuff was over with, the, the, some of them trout never got caught. And they, they just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's, you know, that's just ain't no kidding either. I, I seen the time where I hauled out about a six, seven pounder out of there. You know, but anyway, my brother and I knew where this, this old wooden bridge. It was just a one horse, one dog, one <laughs> a cowboy type of old bridge that went over uh, Sp uh, Spring Creek there on the south side of town. And you could get down below that bridge and look down in there as the water ran through the bridge and everything. And every once in a while, there'd be a great big old splash. You know, because what we'd do is we'd go out in the fields there and we'd catch a couple of grasshoppers and we'd pitch them out in there. Grasshoppers. So you guys know what them little creatures are. And every time you threw a grasshopper in there, that big, there was a big old butt, a six, seven pound trout in there that just come up and just, just raise all kinds of cane to get to that grasshopper and munch it up, you know, and that kind of stuff. Well, the, the, the my brother and I were a little bit downtrodden because we did not have any fishing tackle. We had an old willow pole that we carved out with some string on it, some monofilament tied up at the top. But we didn't have any sinkers and we didn't have any hooks. Now back in them days, uh, a package of sinkers would cost you about, for a little tube of sinkers, it cost you like uh, 10 cents if I remember right. And a package of hooks, or six, six in a package, was 15 cents. So total, your, your total cost to get to fishing was 25 cents. Well, we didn't even have 25 cents. We didn't, we didn't have two pennies between the both of us, you know. So anyway, we're discussing what we're going to do because we want this big trout. You know, I just knew it was a matter of just getting a grasshopper rigged up somehow, some way, and getting it under and letting it float underneath that bridge and we have his dinner. You know, that's the way I was looking at things, you know. So my brother Nick, he looks at me and he goes, what are we going to do, Jim? Because we, you know, we'd be studying... You know, we stood around for a while making this battle plan, you know, trying to how we were going to get this crook, this big old trout. Spearing the thing was out of the question because the, the, the bridge was too low and all this other stuff. There was just too many things against us. The only thing that was going to work is if we took some fishing tackle of some kind, took a grasshopper, whatever, and floated it to that big trout. So this is why I, I was sitting around thinking and thinking. And after a while, I, said, I told my brother, I says, I said, hey, Nick, I got an idea. And old Nick says, what's that, Jim? And I says, let's go home and dig around. And you know, mom's sewing kit there, that, that tin can that she's got. I said, let's dig around in there. And say, there's gotta be something in there that we can use, you know? And Nick said, okay. So we got home and everything. We had to be real sneaky because my mom didn't dig us. Kids messing around with her sewing stuff. Anyway, anyway, pretty soon I plucked out this right here. See this here deal? My wife looked all over today to help me find one of these in the house. Or this is a safety pin. But we got we got a safety pin, and I told Nick, I says, all we gotta do is just tie the line on right here, and we'll we'll stick a grasshopper, we'll impale the grasshopper right on this safety pin, and we'll go catch that big trout, you know. Oh no, he's gonna go fishing with a pin. 
<laughs> you know, you guys know how I'm doing with that voice, Mike. He's going fishing with a safety pin. Well, that's what that, that's what I intended on doing. One of these right here, just as you look at it. The only thing is the safety pin that I was using was just a little bit bigger than this. It was a big clunky thing, because I figured the bigger the safety pin, the, 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 be, the more better it was for me to catch that trout. So anyway, we get on down there towards that bridge and everything, and we took a big old fat grasshopper and just impaled it right onto this pin. And my brother got on down down to the right of me, down in and below me, kind of on the edge of the the the, the, the bridge water there. But so he stood back so he didn't scare that big trout. And I was up on top of the bridge, and I just took this pin and the grasshopper and everything and just plunked it right down there and just let it float right down the right down the doggone underneath the bridge, you know. And I had that grasshopper hadn't been in there more than five seconds and all of a sudden the water just exploded and there I am with a willow stick fishing pole six eight foot long something like that going just like this this great big old trout six seven pounds something like that and my brother's down there and of course he's got pretty excited because he didn't have much faith that this this grasshopper i.e safety pin thing was going to work you know but me I didn't care I wanted me a fish for dinner and that was all there was to it so anyway, my brother looks up and he says, hey, Jim, try to get that fish over here and I'll, I'll, I'll help you get him out. Well, my brother, he didn't have no net. He didn't have no spear. He didn't have anything, you know. So anyway, I, I got kind of excited while I was fighting with this fish and I did a very dumb thing. If I'd have done what my brother wanted, we might have had the possibility of getting that fish. But here I went like this and just... As soon as I stripped in enough line or had enough control, I, I don't want to say stripped in line because it was just tied up at the top, but as soon as I got enough control on that fish, I decided to just hoist him up right up and over the wood side rails. With The, the side rails weren't very tall at all. They were only about like this. I can say it was just an old wood cowboy type of bridge, a ranching type of a bridge, if I remember, right, which I do remember, right? But anyway, <laughs> I got this fish up about halfway up, probably about like, I don't know, three foot out of the water or something like that, and I'll be doggone if it just didn't slip right off the pin like this and plunked right back down into the water. Oh no, he didn't catch a fish. But I missed the fish, and that's the end of my story, but at least I tried and all that kind of stuff. So the moral of the story is this. If you go fishing, ladies and gentlemen, get some decent hooks, whatever you do. Don't be a... a clot like me, a clud like me, and you can try to fish with a, a, a safety pin because it just don't work out too well. Right, Mother? Right. My wife's sitting right to that next to me. She's got a slight smile on her face because she knows I tried to make this video about 10 times and failed every time. Either my dentures were falling out of my head, I mixed the story all up or whatever. You guys don't realize that this this looking at these cameras like this is kind of weird when you're telling stories. Oh, before I forget, if you want to sign up to my channel, I'd appreciate it. You know, give me a thumbs up, a thumbs down, a love finger. You know what I'm talking about? Don't get nervous about that. You know, like I say, my name's Jim, an older guy up here in Montana and all that stuff. And by the way, comment too. If you like this content, if you like what I'm trying to do here, do a comment or two. It all helps this channel out. Okay, okay. Very well, ladies and gentlemen. I shall bid you adieu and all that kind of stuff. But I did not get the fish. That's the bottom line here. And, you know, oh, no, he should not go fishing with safety pins. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Adios, my friends. We shall see you on down the trail. Boop.